Hey, what's up, Parasites? Welcome to the 750th episode of the Venom Vlog. And I'm sorry I'm way late on this one. I had a couple ideas of what I wanted to do for the 750th episode, and some of them just are taking way too long to edit and work on. And so I said, you know what, I'm going to just scrap some of those and take an idea that I had for next season and move it up. So that way we kind of get a, a taste of next season and some of the episodes that I might make. Uh, so this is kind of a Venomverse, that's what I'm going to call it. It's kind of entering the Venomverse, and we're going to talk about other universe versions of the black suit. Uh, you know, whether it ended up on Eddie Brock or if it stayed on Peter Parker, whatever the case is, or if it ends up on the Punisher, uh, you know, which happened in a What If comic book. So there will be episodes of this that are within the Venom vlog where we'll do like three. We'll talk about two or three different stories that are out there that are in the Venomverse that aren't in main continuity that deal with a version of the symbiote. Uh, so today we're going to talk about something that could have been, since we're doing kind of what if stories in a way, uh, we're going to talk about a story called Self-Improvement, uh, which is uh, something that Randy Schuler was, uh, you wrote. He was the original creator of the black costume. Uh, he was a fan who drew a picture of the black costume with a red spider on it, sent it into Marvel, and they were like, hey, we're intrigued. We kind of have this idea that we're going to do with Iron Fist, but we could probably retrofit it into giving it to Spider-Man instead of giving Iron Fist a new costume, we'll give Spider-Man a new costume. So do you have any ideas, you know, of what could go along, what story would go along with this suit? So this is Peter David taking that original Randy Schuler pitch, which is actually reprinted in here, which I really like. Uh, they show the original version of what Randy Schuler pitched, because obviously he had the costume idea, they wanted a story idea, so Tom DeFalco's like, hit me. And so we got the original pitch that is reprinted in here, and then you have the, the second pitch after Tom DeFalco's notes. And I got to say, me and Tom DeFalco would probably would get along really well as editors <laughs> because when he's, you know, uh, editing the pitch, he's like, OK, why why are we opening with dialogue? And then five pages later, we're still doing dialogue and seven pages later, we're still doing dialogue. He's like, what's happening in the artwork? Like, why isn't there more action? You know, if you're going to start a story where Spider-Man transitions costumes, start with an action scene and show him lose his previous costume and then have him, you know, work, build a story around him getting a new costume. And, uh, and so this was all before Secret Wars, before they decided to, to put all that story together. And this was going to be, I guess, the original version of what the black costume would have been. And so, uh, so Peter David fleshes that story out. He takes that original pitch with Tom DeFalco's notes, it looks like, and writes like a cool little 20-page story based around it. So it's, it's neat. You know, it's a cool what, what would have been with the black suit. Uh, it is not an alien. Um, it is not uh, vengeful in any way like that. It's actually made of unstable molecules. So what happens in this book is that Spider-Man starts off in a battle against Firebrand, and he's trying to save this woman at an art gallery. He was there as Peter Parker taking photos, uh, which they explain later, because obviously you want to start with the action sequence. And, uh, and he gets hit with fire, and it burns his back really badly. And so uh, after protecting the girl and, and saving her, and, get, and she, you know she escapes, Human Torch shows up to help Spider-Man fight Firebrand, and then Firebrand gets away. So Human Torch takes Peter, or Spider-Man, back to the Baxter building where Reed Richards takes a look at him and, you know, puts him in a, a Bantha tank or something. He you know, puts him in something that where he could uh, heal and it heals his back and everything. So he's like, hey, thanks, but is there any chance you can heal my costume? Because it takes me like a week to sew things. And Reed Richards like sewing. He's like, that's adorable. <laughs> and he brings out this costume, which is black with the red spider on it. And he says, this is made of unstable molecules like our suits. So, uh, so actually it's, uh, you know, there's technology in it that will just self-repair uh and so spider-man's like oh wow interesting he's like so i can have this he goes yeah sure man take it for a spin uh and so spider-man runs around looking for firebrand and trying to find the woman he you know saved who got away finds out that she's actually married to firebrand and they have a kid and so firebrand is went to her house um, or her apartment in new york to try to kill her and uh and or get his money back i guess i guess she like stole some money from him or something like that to give to the kid you know firebrand wants that money back and then when he finds out that the mom had told her daughter your father's dead she didn't tell you know she, she didn't tell her daughter the truth she didn't say hey your dad's super villain she said your father's dead and when he finds that out he's like okay and he, he's like i'm gonna kill you for saying that like i'm her father and even if i'm a bad guy in your eyes like you should still you know you shouldn't tell her i'm dead so he loses it and he's about to, you know, kill her. And then Spider-Man shows up in his new suit to save the day. Um, but when he does it, he's wearing the black suit. And throughout the issue, when he's swinging around in the black suit, people just aren't trusting him. His, uh, his, you know, Reed designed the suit differently. So the webbing comes out of the back. So he's shooting webbing and it's, it's coming out of, you know, he's he just not timing things right at first. And he I, I ends up crashing a helicopter. He saves it. He, you know, he webs it up first and then saves it um, in front of J. Jonah Jameson. 
and that causes more problems there and people are starting to call him a menace now that he's wearing this black suit but it's just him trying to get adjusted to it it's not really him doing bad things but when he shows up and saves this woman and her child the child freaks out because she's like oh well you know um, most bad guys and burglars in this neighborhood are dressed in all black and and that's what you're wearing and he kind of freaks out this little girl so he decides to give the costume back to reed at the end and sew his own and, and repair his old costume um so that's it that's pretty much i guess the pitch that randy Schuler had come up with with you know tweaks and stuff like that and adjustments um and then tom defalco's notes so i really did like that they put that in the back of the book where they reprinted the original pitch so you can read it word for word and then read tom's notes which like i said were a little savage at times but you know randy Schuler was you know an amateur creator and writer at that time i don't know if he ever went on to write other things um, I don't think he did, but um, but he, at, at least this point in his life, was a younger dude and he was just came up with a cool concept and Marvel loved it. And I think they were kind of hoping he could bring it to life in a new way. And it looks like, you know, that storyline, which ended up in this book, didn't really wow them at the offices. Uh, and they came up with the Secret Wars idea instead and made the symbiote, you know, made it a living alien symbiote from outer space which I think is much cooler than just a, a costume Reed Richards made for Spider-Man. Um, so anyway, it's cool to have this in here. And then I guess Tom DeFalco threw a little sample of his own writing at the end of this book. Uh, there's another short story at the end about Spider-Man uh, trying to stop this kid from killing a burglar who killed his uncle. So it's a pretty much the same origin story of Spider-Man. A kid sees his uncle get killed by these guys and it's kind of he feels responsible for it. And then he uh, goes to he takes a gun and goes to kill those guys that killed his uh, his uncle and Spider-Man shows up to talk him out of it. So it was a cool little heartwarming uh, story. I, I kind of like that one, but I think it was just more of Tom DeFalco going, okay, well if you're gonna reprint my notes of how like you know I structure a story, then I should probably write a little short story for this book also. <laughs> so that was fun. It was just kind of a neat little package. So a, a neat window into what could have been you know if the symbiote didn't turn out to be an alien symbiote if it turned out to be something created by reed richards uh you know that would have think of the world we'd been be in right now like if that was the origin of of venom you know in a sense like because uh, i imagine that suit will eventually go on to somebody else and they would become like an evil spider-man i'm sure that was like a plan at some point but i much rather prefer an alien symbiote with a, a mind of its own and uh and, you know and, and goals of its own and stuff and, and also leeching off of its hosts and everything like that i think it just Bred, uh, you know, way more interesting stories over the years uh, than something like this would have. But still, I want to know what you think, so let me know down below. All right, the next alternate world we're going to enter here is this one from Peach Momoko called Demon Days X Men. And I know you're thinking, wait, X Men? I thought you were talking about a symbiote. Well, I am kind of talking about a symbiote, or at least a version of Venom that is very different than the one we have seen in comic books. Um, so this one is a story where this young girl, which is essentially a version of Psylocke, I think, um, she is going through uh, this training, just this rite of passage, this, you know, and uh, growing into womanhood and being a hunter. Um, and she's, you know, working against or with her people against this uh, goblin guy, this demon that is... Uh, terrorizing the woods around uh, their village and stuff and uh, along the way though she's you know hears about this myth of the the true evil in this land which is the venom creature which is hanging out at this like hut temple place that uh, our main character is working her way to so um yeah i don't know it, it's kind of neat um you know there's logan's in this it, as a wolf <laughs> and she kind of jumps on his back like um it's kind of reminds me of princess mononoke a little bit uh, but yeah, anyway, so this is a, a, just a different take on the X-Men universe, on the Marvel universe in general, based on Peach Momoko, who's been doing amazing cover art and, and some interior art for a lot of books, you know, throughout the years. And I think this was Marvel going, you know what, your name sells. Like when they go to conventions and she does a signing, the line is like wrapped around her booth and other booths and stuff like that. So I think they were like, we have a hit star on our hands, uh, at least with someone who can generate buzz and, and get people interested in, in the book whether it's a topic or characters they are interested in and not normally she brings them in and so i think that's why they were like let's give her her own series now as far as i know this is the only time in the series where uh, a venom creature shows up um it does get defeated in this one obviously uh, because as she's working her way through the different terrain of her her countryside um she ends up at that temple 
to fight against the Venom creature. And uh, it's pretty cool. I mean, she runs into other little creatures on the way, like this demon guy who she runs into, and then this guy. And then it turns out the demon isn't so bad. He's, you know, he's just protecting, you know, the some creatures in the land and everything. So she's like, okay, you're just kind of misunderstood. Um, I I'm going to move on now because the real threat is up ahead. And that real threat, like I said, is Venom. It's possessing or, or bonded to a giant snake god, essentially. So this giant serpent that lives in this temple or lived in this area has taken over this temple is bonded to Venom, uh, you know, uh, some kind of spirit demon thing that is uh, coming to our world. And so we have our characters, including Suki, who's a newer character, I think, that is put into this. And the three of them with Logan and, you know, and uh, Sai, uh, our main character, or one of our main characters, our warrior, they all fight against the Venom creature. And I'm sorry for the light glares. Um, so yeah, just just neat stuff. I, I don't know. I, I thought it was a, it's a very different take on Venom, for sure. And uh, But it was cool to see Venom used as the villain in this. Like, I wouldn't have expected that with a story that was kind of based around a, a different version of Wolverine and Psylocke, in a way. Um, I wouldn't have guessed they would have went that route with uh, something Spider-Man related. But they do, and I think it kind of works, you know. It's, a, it's not one of my favorite takes on the character, obviously, but it's a neat one. It's certainly imaginative on a lot of levels. And so when they beat Venom, the snake drops and then vanishes. So like I said, I don't think this character or this Venom ever shows up again in the rest of the series. But it was just like a neat little weird, you know, take on the character. And I thought it would make a good inclusion for this episode. So if you read this issue, Demon Days X-Men number one, let me know what you think down below. Because like I said, I, I liked it overall. It was fine. It was imaginative. But it's, like I said, it's not one of my favorite takes on the Venom symbiote or a version of Venom. Um, I much prefer something like uh, Mangaverse Spider-Man, which we're going to get into next season. Uh, that version of Venom where he's like a an evil dojo master and stuff. Like I thought that one was a little bit cooler. So we'll dive into that next season for sure. And last but not least, we have this rare, weird Spider-Man uh, 100th anniversary, and it's listed as Spider-Man number one. And I got the variant version because I just like this take on Venom. I thought that was so cool looking. Um, but this doesn't actually follow any in-continuity storylines. Uh, this was something they just released. I think they were celebrating Marvel's 100th or something like that. And, uh, and so they just did all these random one-shot issues that were conclusions to stories. So it says Great Power, Part 8 of 8, uh, by Sean Ryan and in Hyuk Lee, but it's not uh, it's not Part 8 of 8. I mean, it is Part 8 of 8, but there's no Part 1, uh, one through 7, um, I should say. So in this one, it's an alternate universe where the Kingpin actually created the symbiote. He already paid the people, the scientists that made the symbiote, he paid them to do it. Uh, so it's a little bit more like Ultimate Universe Venom. Um, except it does, you know, it does bond to Eddie, and Eddie does get killed in this one right at the beginning, where the Kingpin shoots Eddie to get the costume back, uh, because he's like, hey, I paid for that thing, and now that Eddie has worked out all the kinks, uh, and you worked out the kinks with Eddie, you know, because you had the suit at one point too, now it's going to come back to who created it, you know, the, the, its real master, which is Kingpin. So now Kingpin becomes Venom, and the suit is not a, it's not, uh, it's made of technology, it's a, called a techno symbiote. So it has uh, little nanites and nanobots and stuff inside of it, causing it to move around like liquid and things like that. So it's not a, it's not like a living, breathing, you know, creature from outer space with a personality of its own. It's something that was created in a lab that is uh, very one dimensional and it just enhances the person who's wearing it. So now you have Spider-Man standing over Eddie Brock's dead body without his suit uh, for some reason. Um, and then, you know, Kingpin getting ready to eat him and attack him. So I love the artwork. It's really cool. Um, I think Sean Ryan, who's also the guy who wrote that Venom, that free Venom movie comic that came out when the movie uh, was released. If you went opening weekend, you get that free comic book. Um, I think he wrote that too. So his name pops up from time to time. He does, you know, did a lot of stuff at Marvel and uh, and still does little things from time to time with Marvel. Um, but yeah, it's just, there's a lot of cool imagery in here. So I, I just like the artwork mainly. The, the book is pretty much Spider-Man on the run from Kingpin. Uh, who is now Venom, and he's just chasing him throughout the city and nearly killing him, and that's pretty much the whole story. I mean, he's, through exposition, is explaining the world. It looks like Peter might have uh, lost Aunt May during this whole storyline, so, she, so she's gone, and uh, and then also things with Mary Jane and him are, aren't working out very well, so it's pretty standard, you know, set reset Peter, make his life terrible kind of thing, and then while all that's going on, he's just running for his life, 
And eventually what he does is he gets out of, you know, he swims through uh, the Hudson, <laughs> which is gross. Um, and he makes his way to the woods where he just takes two sticks and starts a fire um, and uses that as his weapon against Venom. Uh, because even in this world, the Techno symbiote, for some reason, still has an allergy to fire. And so Spider-Man uses it to defeat Venom. And like I said, yeah, the imagery is really cool. And I think, uh, you know, this is Spider-Man coming through, you know, being the massive underdog. That's kind of what this story is. It's just him on the run, about to die at every turn. Every time you turn the page, it's getting worse and worse for him. And then finally, at the end, he uses a little bit of smarts and does uh he's kind of becomes like a little bit of a, a woodsman and lumberjack guy you know just going old school boy scout and uh, rubbing two sticks together to make fire and ends up defeating his enemy that way with something that you know i wouldn't say that simple but still like um going back to some form of basic uh which was cool it was neat to see that from spider-man because usually he overthinks things and you know and thinks about the scientific way to do things and uh, comes up with a, a solution and this time he was like all right i'm going to do that but it's going to i'm going to think smaller i'm going to think uh you know fire brush fire and he creates a little brush fire in the woods traps venom and then they fight each other and he beats them so uh, and then defeats kingpin once and for all so uh, i like that and then at the end he's like all right well you know i, I lost people i love during all this and uh but you know everything that is destroyed some things can fix and, you know, grief will always be with me and I'm going to have to work through this grief uh, with the people I've lost during this whole endeavor. Um, but I can also learn to rebuild, uh, not just myself, but, um, you know, I guess uh, the, the Spider-Man identity and persona. And so that's what he does. And he spends the last few pages stitching together his costume, um, which is cool. It kind of bookend it that way because the Randy Schuler's story ended with him giving the, the black suit back to Reed Richards and sewing a costume. And this one is him defeating Kingpin in the black costume and sewing a costume. Um, so I just thought those were appropriate to do in one episode here. But if you've read this issue too, let me know what you think down below in the comments. Um, I liked it overall. I, it's not a lot of story in it. It's pretty much, like I said, just a survivalist a story in a way. It's Spider-Man just on the run. And Kingpin gives most of the backstory in exposition, as does Peter at times when the one or two moments he has to breathe in the story and Eddie's dead right when the book opens like he, his Spider-Man's holding his dead body so it's for you Eddie fans out there it's you know this was a a really weak episode <laughs> because there's not a lot of Eddie Brock in here but I figured I'd start with this one because we're still talking about you know Spider-Man we're going to get into Spider-Verse stuff next season too but I did want to focus and do some Venomverse episodes there are other universes out there with their own Venoms or their own versions of Venom and I think it'd be fun to kind of delve into those three at a time in future episodes like we did in this one. Let me know what you think down below of this episode, uh, and I'll have more for you next season. And thanks for 750 episodes for five long years of hanging out together and talking about Venom. It's been an absolute pleasure, and I'm very, very grateful. And we will have more coming very soon. I normally used to do 150 episodes per season. We're going to start doing 50 episode seasons. Um, so that way, in case we ever get slow on movie news and we're in, in between seasons, I can take a little bit of a break and, and work on other things. I just finished finally The King of Neverland, book one. And book two is pretty much done as well. It's, it's been done for a while. But I'm just going through and doing like last minute edits and everything like that and uploading it to Kickstarter. And then book three will, will um, finish up after that. So I will have things that I got to work on outside of, you know, YouTubing. So if we ever get downtime, you know, in between seasons, I'm going to take that downtime. I still might upload things, but uh, but it'll be like shorts and stuff like that. Um, and then I'll probably upload stuff on my, my other channel, my gaming channel during those times. But for now though, you know, we wrap this season up finally. I'm sorry it took so long and we will get season six started immediately. So hopefully in the next couple days, you will see uh, episode 751 and then we're gonna dive into the dark web stuff soon after that. Um, and then I also have a, a chat with somebody coming up after dark web is over. We're gonna do like a, um, you know, kind of like me and uh, Eddie do, Eddie's mullet. Me and him are going to try to do a Carnage episode together uh, coming up where we talk about the current Carnage book and kind of get up to maybe issue seven or eight. And then we also, I have another interview or interview, but another conversation with somebody and we're going to talk about Dark Web and what we both thought of Dark Web. But that'll come probably um, early March. So uh, be on the lookout for that for sure. So thanks so much for watching the show. Thanks so much for supporting me for five years and we have a lot more to come. 250 more episodes. I'm going to try to get to episode 1000 in the next like two years. So Fingers crossed. Let's try to do it. Here we go. Peace.